This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Friday, May 9th, 2014. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to CNN, U.S. military officials are expected to arrive in Nigeria today to help in the search for hundreds of girls kidnapped by Islamist militants, according to the Pentagon. The seven will join a team already advising Nigeria on the search, U.S. Navy Rear Admiral John Kirby said, who serves as Pentagon Press Secretary. About 60 U.S. interagency members have been on the ground since before the kidnappings as part of counterterrorism efforts with Nigeria. They have been holding meetings, getting resources into the country, and making assessments with local authorities. Secretary of State John Kerry said on Thursday, our interagency team is hitting the ground in Nigeria now. Secretary of State John Kerry said on Thursday, our interagency team is hitting the ground in Nigeria now, and they are going to be working with President Goodluck Jonathan's government to do everything that we possibly can to return these girls. Their tasks include establishing a coordination cell to provide intelligence, investigations, and hostage negotiation expertise. According to Kirby, there are no plans to send American combat troops into Nigeria. Second today, according to Religion News Service, Catholic, Protestant, and Orthodox leaders joined forces on Wednesday to call for an end to the silence over persecuted Christian communities in Egypt, Iraq, and Syria. Leith Anderson, president of the National Association of Evangelicals, called the region the unsafest place in the world for Christians. He said, what we are seeing here is ecumenical cleansing. It is an ecumenical cleansing that is forcing people who are Christians, by whatever label, out of countries where their roots are from the beginning. Anderson and others were joined on Capitol Hill by the co-chairs of the religious minorities in the Middle East Caucus, Representative Frank Wolf and Representative Anna Ishu, who have pushed for the appointment of a special envoy focused on Middle East religious minorities. More than 180 clergy, seminary professors, authors, and activists have signed a pledge of solidarity and a call to action that advocates for the special envoy, in addition to a regional review of U.S. foreign aid to ensure recipients uphold principles of pluralism and religious freedom. They also seek assurance that religious minorities receive fair access to U.S. refugee assistance. Third today, according to Bloomberg, President Vladimir Putin visited the Crimea region he annexed from Ukraine amid growing tensions as officials said the European Union is preparing to expand sanctions to cover some Russian companies. Putin's trip to Sevastopol, the home of Russia's Black Sea Fleet, was his first since the Crimean Peninsula seceded from Ukraine in March. It came hours after he watched tanks rumbling across Red Square and Moscow to commemorate the Soviet victory over the Nazis in World War II. The government in Kyiv and its U.S. and European allies said Putin is fomenting unrest in eastern Ukraine, where pro-Russian separatists in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions are preparing to stage autonomy referendums on May 11. Fourth today, according to USA Today News, President Obama will announce new plans today designed to boost solar power and promote energy efficiency, including the completed installation of solar panels on the White House roof. The solar panels on the President's residence are part of an energy retrofit that will improve the overall energy efficiency of the building, according to White House spokesman Matt Lyric. During a visit to Walmart in Mountain View, California, near San Jose, Obama will also outline what aides call some 300 private and public sector commitments designed to create jobs and reduce carbon pollution. The speech comes three days after the administration issued a report saying that climate change caused by pollution is already damaging the environment and triggering extreme weather conditions. Fifth today, according to the Baptist Press, Southern Baptist and Evangelical Church members can now invest with Guidestone funds. Since its 2001 inception, Guidestone Funds has limited participation to pastors, missionaries, and employees of Southern Baptist and Evangelical churches and ministries, as well as their immediate family members. The Southern Baptist Convention's 2013 amendment of Guidestone's ministry statement to allow the entity to offer its investments, insurance, and services to like-minded individuals helped make the change possible. 
Godstone described the change which went into effect on May 5th as an important next step in supporting the company's long-term growth and fulfilling its mission. Ron Dugan, Chief Strategic Investment Officer for Guidestone, said we believe that the time is right to make these funds available to a wider Christian audience. Six today, according to Fox 5 San Diego, a lawsuit was filed in San Diego on Thursday on behalf of six women who claimed they were the victims of sexual battery and harassment at a drug and alcohol recovery program affiliated with the Rock Church Ministries of San Diego. The lawsuit claims the women, five participants, and one former employee suffered sexual misconduct at the hands of a recovery program director. It names husband and wife David and Tina Powers and the ABC Sober Living Facilities they run, which are affiliated with the Point Loma-based Rock Church, according to the lawsuit. Attorney Erwin Zalkin said the plaintiffs were exploited because they were vulnerable. The lawsuit alleged that David Powers behaved inappropriately toward the women at different periods between 2010 and 2013, and that his wife was aware of this behavior. One of Powers' employees, Fred Murray, is also named as a defendant. Seven today, according to the Associated Press, the head of the mission charged with destroying serious chemical weapons said on Thursday, the last 16 containers of dangerous chemical agents that need to be transported out of the country are in a contested area not far from Damascus that is currently inaccessible. Sigri Kog appealed to countries with influence on armed groups fighting in Syria to help arrange unfettered access for experts to the site at a military air base and safe transport for the chemicals to the port of Latakia, where Danish and Norwegian ships are waiting to take the containers to a U.S. vessel for destruction. Kog spoke to reporters after briefing the U.N. Security Council and said in an interview later with the Associated Press that the 16 containers representing 8% of Syria's declared stockpile contain material to produce the deadly nerve agent sarin, as well as other dangerous chemical agents. Eighth today, according to CBS Boston, a reenactment of a black mass celebrating Satan is scheduled to take place at Harvard University on Monday evening. It has outraged the Catholic Church, but the group holding the event says it's educational. The Harvard Extension Cultural Studies Club is hosting the Satanic Temple from New York. The Black Mass is scheduled for Monday night on the basement of Memorial Hall. Mizan Oteria, a student at Harvard, said it's kind of troubling, especially to Christians. But at the same time, if they're doing it for academic inquiry, this should be a safe place. Another student, Farhad Zokani, said it is still heavily offending a group. And what's the purpose? The Archdiocese of Boston wants Harvard to put a stop to the event. They issued a statement saying the Catholic Church in the Archdiocese of Boston expresses its deep sadness and strong opposition to the plan to stage a black mass on the campus of Harvard University in Cambridge. For the good of the Catholic faithful and all people, the Church provides clear teaching concerning satanic worship. This activity separates people from God and the human community. It is contrary to charity and goodness, and it places participants dangerously close to destructive works of evil. Nine today, according to the Associated Press, the U.S. State Department says Honduras has extradited a suspected drug trafficker to the United States for the first time. Department spokesperson Jen Saki says that Carlos Arnaldo Lobo was extradited on Thursday. The 40-year-old Lobo is wanted on drug trafficking charges in Miami, Florida. He was arrested March 27th when Honduran security forces surprised him in a bakery in San Pedro Sula near the Caribbean coast. His extradition was approved in April and the Supreme Court upheld it last week. Tenth and finally today, according to CNN, thousands of protesters have surrounded Bangkok's government house seeking the removal of Thailand's embattled caretaker government amid soaring political tensions in the wake of former Prime Minister Yingluck Sinawatra's ouster. The People's Democratic Reform Committee, PDRC, which has been protesting against the government since November, is pushing to replace the country's caretaker administration with an unelected interim government. The PDRC has been seeking to rid Thai politics of the alleged influence of former Prime Minister Thaksin Sinawatra. Yingluck's telecommunications tycoon brother who was overthrown in a 2006 military coup. 
and has since lived in self-imposed exile to avoid a corruption conviction. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Romans 8, 1 and 2 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.